Okay. Awesome, Tina. Perfect, perfect, Tracy. Let me know if you guys have any issues, all right? And I do see your questions coming in. Now, you guys won't be able to see any other questions from the other members in here, but you know, I will be answering the questions, and when I answer your guys' question, I'll be able to re I'll make sure to read those questions out loud so that way everybody can um, hear those. Uh, Diane, just do more in Corel than Designer Edition. Okay, perfect, perfect. Yeah, we had our um, design. Well, we had our TRW Stone Wizard webinar yesterday, and we're actually ha going to be covering uh, Corel Basic Overview next week. Uh, we're going to have a, a webinar next week. I believe that one is on Tuesday, which we'll be releasing later on today. Um, all those webinars for next week as well. So, you guys, if you guys want to register ahead of time, you guys will be able to do so, and we'll post those on Facebook. Yeah, we'll be having a, actually another lounge. We've been uh, getting requests for the TRW Lounge, which actually seems to be a big hit with everybody. So we're actually going to be doing a TRW Lounge as well next next week. Um, <clears throat> now, is anybody in the Dallas area, did anybody actually go to the show yesterday? Uh, Matt and Dan were actually at the, the ASI Dallas show. Uh, so I know they had a great time, took a lot of pictures. They said they had a great time meeting all you guys. Um, so anybody, anybody actually go to the show yesterday or planning on going today? Cool, cool, awesome, perfect, cool. All right, guys, so that's awesome. Like I said, it's uh, we have a lot of shows coming up this week as well. If you guys haven't checked it out yet on our website, if you guys go to the website here, at the top where it says show schedule, well, first off, you guys will see where we have our show schedule. So if you guys are near any of these areas, come on by and check us out. We have a great time at the booths where you guys will be able to see a lot of uh, input trainings. Um, for the most part, at most shows, we will be doing some trainings for the shows as well. So NBM Orlando will actually be having two classes for the NBM show, and then we'll also be uh, having the in-boot trainings as well. So a lot of great in uh, education being thrown out there during the show. So make sure if you guys are in these areas, if you guys are able to make it to one of the shows, I would definitely encourage it. All right. <clears throat> Another cool thing we got going on right now here at the Rhinestone World is, let me go ahead and bring our Facebook page in. We are actually still having our TRW Valentine's Day giveaway. So if you guys have not checked this out yet, let me go ahead and click on it. So everything you see here, one lucky winner will receive. So as you can see, we're also giving away a cool portrait, which can be used with the Designer Edition software as well. So you guys, with the knowledge you learned today, you win this package here. You guys have a cool, um, cool cutter with a lot of cool vinyl as well, a tote bag, and a nice shirt here with some stones and a cool template as well. All you guys have to do to, uh, to enter that contest is just click on the link right here or on the giveaway link here that you see on our Facebook page. Tracy, yes. Go ahead and sign on. Sign up for the, for the giveaway. It's going to be a cool uh, surprise, and that ends tomorrow at noon. That's Friday at noon. All right? And one last thing I do want to show you guys. If you guys Have you guys started working with uh, sign vinyl, or excuse me, wall vinyl yet? Anybody actually working with wall vinyl? Okay, I see some of you guys are already. Awesome. Awesome. Actually, we just started carrying some of the FTC 4300 sign vinyl as well. So if you guys haven't checked that out, we have the matte finish. Uh, if you guys, this was uh, yesterday's webinar behind the scenes. They snuck in here and caught a picture of me while I was doing the webinar. But uh, let me go ahead and scroll down just a tad bit down here. So we actually have removable wall vinyl now, guys. So this is all matte finish. Very, very cool looking colors. We sell it by the sheet and by the roll. So you guys can go on the website and check it out. We also have the applique tape that goes with it. So it's actually a different tape than the sign vinyl. So make sure you guys don't try to use the, this is actually a less tacky tape. So it works perfect for walls. It doesn't damage the wall. So right here is that tape right there. So that's all listed on the website now, and you guys can go ahead and purchase it. So if you guys are working with Sign Vinyl, I'd recommend trying this material out. It's really great. Again, it's FTC Sign Vinyl 4300. All right. So enough of that. Let's go ahead and get started. So all right, guys. So actually, one last thing before we get started, one helpful tip here for all you guys using the Silhouette Cameo. Um, now, are most of you guys working with the Silhouette Cameo right now? Okay, okay, perfect. So I know somebody earlier said, I know uh, it was a Tina that said that you use more, or excuse me, Diane, that you use Corel more, um, but you're still cutting with the Cameo. Perfect, okay, not yet, nope, okay, awesome. So let me show you guys something. When you do start cutting with it, if you guys are not custom to the Silhouette Cameo and the cut settings, what we have here is a documentation sheet. So let me go ahead and click on that. Actually, let's go ahead and just go to our uh, yeah documentation here. And if I can click on my documentation, what we have here is our spec sheet. So if you want to see all the cut settings for the Silhouette Cameo for all the different materials, we have that set up here for you guys. So this is when you first start off with a brand new cutter, or excuse me, a brand new blade. So here are your recommendations for the cut settings for Sticky Flock. You got the Caesar or Chemica HTV, 
um, non-glitter and non-leather, and then you also have the glitter holographic HCV leather vinyls as well, and also the FTC decal vinyl, and then we're also going to be including also the wall vinyl as well for you guys in there, which is very similar to the glitter vinyl. It's a little bit thicker material, so um, that will be all included in there, but yeah, if you guys have never actually seen this sheet here, it's going to be very helpful when you guys are starting out with your first cuts and learning the different cut settings, so make sure if you guys are, again, if you guys haven't checked this out on the website, definitely check it out. And it, again, if you guys are working with different cutters, you'll see that on here as well. So we actually have gone through, you'll see all the different um, spec, uh, specs of the, each cutter, as well as all the cut settings for all the different cutters and different materials. So pretty cool documentation sheet there, and it's free for you guys. So you guys can go in there and check it out at your, time, at your own time. All right. So I always like to show that I know a lot of you guys always have questions on cut settings. And the great thing about it is even uh, we got back a couple weeks ago, and Sammy and Sean, a couple guys in the call center that are uh, really cool guys back there that will be able to help you guys out with any questions. They were actually doing the cut settings. So we check the cut settings on these at least once a month to make sure we keep up to date with the, with, uh, with the settings. So just, again, another thing that we do there to help you guys out and make your life easier. All right. So let's go ahead and get started with the webinar here. So as you guys can see, we have our Designer Edition Studio here. So this is the most up-to-date. This is the version 3. Now no, notice the first thing that happens when I open my – when I open the – the designer edition is that we have our recover documents here. So here, anything that you've worked on or that you were recently working on and maybe you crashed, you'll find in here. So notice how it tells me auto save 2.5 at 10 a.m. So that's the last time I worked with this particular file right there. All right. So anything that you've worked with, you'll see right here. It's almost like your recent page you'll see in here. All right. Um, next thing we have is obviously our tab up here. We have our file uh, where you'll be able to open your your files. You have also the library here that comes with the designer edition software. Uh, you have import, show, show draw, drawing area. Now everything you guys will see up here, you guys will see also over here. So notice if I go to object and I see mirror, rotate, style, arrange, all of that can be also found right here. So if I want to go to replicate, there it is. There's mirror, mirror right. So everything that you see up here can also be found in your tabs up here. And also some of the, some of the features you see up here will also be included down here for you as well. So something as an offset or weld you see down here. And those are just shortcuts for you guys uh, to help you throughout the, the process of designing these designs. So just they, they make it where it makes it easier for you guys to be able to, you know, if you get want a quick offset instead of having to go all the way to the right up here and then hitting offset and then choosing one, it gives it to you real quick. It's a quick, it's almost like a quick shortcut. So uh, just, a, you know, again, and, and it, you'll see down here we'll also have the page. So the page, let's just say we want to open a new page. What happens is it just opens a new tab for me. So if I want to go be back between pages, I can go back to my first page where it has my original design. And this one, you can work with a different design in here. All right. And then, of course, up here you have your page settings. So you can change the settings of your page. So height, width, all that good stuff. You can also, um, let's go ahead and make it 12. So 12, and then you can also customize it here if you like. So cool different things here to just customize your workspace. Uh, down here at the bottom, you also have your preferences, so you have your settings down here. So preferences, general, default, all that good stuff. So if you want to um, you use you know, your different units, all your different updates, everything you need to work for as far as the preferences you can find in here. Uh, you also get to change the color of it. In the right corner right here, you almost have this little uh, recycling bin logo down here. If you click on that, it's going to change the color of your silhouette uh, designer edition. Notice now it's blue. So that's, up, you know, again, just able to customize it, which obviously we all love to do is customize. So just cool little tricks there so you guys can um, customize, again, your workstation. So now let's go ahead and move on to our actual features. So what we have here is obviously we have your different undo, redo, your magnifying glass. So here are the different zoom in. So here's your little hand so you can move around the screen. You also have your zoom in just by you utilizing your magnifying your zoom in button here zoom out then we also have our zoom to a specific object so let's just say we have let's say we have a circle here and we want to zoom in towards that circle we can click on that click where you want to zoom in and there it is so it zooms right to the spot that you click on um, and then this one we have is if you left click down so if you zoom up um, excuse me if you move the mouse down and clip left click it's going to zoom in if you're left click and move the mouse up it's going to zoom out so just again just Ways to zoom in and out makes it easier when you're actually designing, especially if you're working with rhinestones where you have to move each individual stone. Those features right there are going to help you out with that. All right. So now let's go ahead and get to the actual tools here. So what we have here is our basic toolbar. So with these basic toolbars, that's going to help us design 
all of our designs. So we have our first one is our pick tool right here. So our pick tool is going to be able to create help us highlight our design. So let me go ahead and bring a design in here. So let's go to open. So if you guys purchase a design from the website, this is what you guys will see. So you'll download the design. Um, it will come in an SVG format. So what I want to do is go ahead and select SVG. And then I'm going to scroll down to my all my different um, designs that I have already installed on my desktop here. So let's go ahead and do Merry Christmas tree right here because I know this one opens up. So there it is. So there's my design. Let's go ahead and zoom out so you guys can see the full design. And now this is for some reason didn't uh doesn't look like it's separated com correctly, but that's all right. It still works for what we're trying to accomplish here. So notice when you first bring in a design, I can highlight it by using my pick tool here. So I can hi highlight my all three different uh, objects here. So I can highlight the full design, my vinyl part here, and the miss mishap that happened over here with the empty template. But notice when I first bring it in, it's all one object. So what I need to do is ungroup this. So one way to do it, you can go to object and hit ungroup at the bottom down here. You can also hit control shift plus G, which will also ungroup it. And then you can also right click and hit ungroup right here, which will help out. And then what I can do is delete that section of it. And then what I have left over is this. So again, let's go ahead and use our uh, magnifying glass. So our zoom in button here, and we're going to zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and there it is. So now I can go ahead, oh, going too far. So now I can go ahead and work with each individual circle. You see that? So that's one way to do it. So that is, and notice with the pick tool, I can also drag my circles. I can drag the vinyl part of this. And now when you guys, you guys will see I go back, I undo, and all I'm doing is holding control and hitting Z as in zebra, okay? So Z as in zebra, notice that it moves back everything I just did, all right? So let's go ahead and zoom out. And if I hit this uh, last little tool right here, guys, it actually zooms out to normal size. So it brings it back to the default setting. All right. Diane says probably yellow star, yes. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, and again, you can move that star around. Now, this design right here will be ready to cut. So now with the design rotation, you don't actually have to create. Uh, it would be nice to – you would have to create the, the weed box for the stones. But for the vinyl, you don't necessarily need to. So with the pick tool, you're able to highlight my design. I can go to my cut settings here, and now with my advanced settings, I can select which layer I want to cut. So notice what I have here, because I selected it with my pick tool, everything is selected in there, but now it gives me layers here. So I went to advanced layers. So cut setting, advanced layers, and what I can do now is select which layers I want to send to my cutter. So if I only want to send the, the vinyl inside the tree right here, I just select my black, and that's all that's going to be sent over to my cutter. Okay, so same thing with the green. If you guys want to just select the stones, in this case, again, I would still, I would create a weed box around it for, for that particular uh, part of it or that, that layer. I would just create a green box around it, and then that way the green box, the weed box, will cut with the stones. So I would just select the green, and there it is. Bam, you can cut the stones out. And, of course, the final star, we can cut that out as well. Or if you want to save some uh, – actually, you know – if you want to, obviously, you can change the color to black, and that way you only have a two-color uh, two design with vinyl and rhinestones rather than three presses. So just different tricks and tips that you guys can do to save material and save time as well um, when creating designs, all right? So, again, that's the pick tool there, and that's obviously our advanced layer settings here that will help you um, with the cutting process. Now, are you guys actually using the layers right here to when you guys are creating your designs? Have you guys actually seen that? section here in the designer edition before okay looks like a, okay looks like some of you have diane says i never have okay awesome so it's always good to uh, show you guys different features and tools here that you can utilize again that's going to save you a lot of time when sending your designs over to your cutter and obviously with the camera you guys know it's not the quickest cutter so anytime you get to save some uh some time it's great to, it's a great thing uh, yes, LaShonda, yes, it's a great question, and LaShonda's question was, can the designer edition count how many rhinestones will be used, and it does, um, let me show you real quick here, so let's highlight my design, I'm going to go to my rhinestone settings here, alright, actually let me go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and show you something here, so if I create a box and I go to my rhinestone settings, let's go ahead and select my box, so this is our, this is our path, and if I select edge right here, Notice at the bottom right here, LaShonda, at the bottom of my rhinestone window here, you'll see where it says SS10s, and it tells me 98. That's where it's going to tell you how many stones you have, all right? Now, it's not gonna, it's going to tell you the number of stones, but it obviously won't tell you, it won't separate the colors for you, all right? So it won't actually tell you 
the number of stones for each color. All right. All right. So next tool we have is our pick tool. And again, guys, be, feel free to ask questions as you go in. As I'm going along, I will, you know, after I'm done with showing one of the features and one of the tools, I'll make sure to stop and answer those questions for you guys, all right? And if, I, if I'm talking too fast, let me know. I will slow down. And uh, if you guys need me to repeat anything, also let me know, all right, guys? Again, I like to interact with you guys as I'm doing the webinar. It keeps it more interesting for me. It keeps it more interesting for you guys. So let me know as I'm going. Just make sure you guys ask questions and let me know how you guys are feeling, all right? Uh, Lashana, yes, it will. It will count the, the stones for a TRW design. You would just have to ungroup it. Uh, Maria, okay, I will slow down for you guys, all right? I know I get excited during the webinars. There's a lot to talk about, so I do tend to speak a little bit faster. So, like I said, just slow me down if I am talking too fast, all right? Um, Tracy, can you layer the different stone colors? Um, as far as when you're doing a multi multicolor design, Tracy, in that case, what I would do is I would create two boxes. One, one the color of the specific uh, rhinestone, and then the other for the second color. And then that way you have the same box, just duplicate it. And then once you actually go ahead and cut the design, you'll select the yellow color and then the green, for example. So that's how you would cut the box and the stones together. Okay. So, yeah, Tracy, that would, that would be the way to do that. And uh, if you have any questions on that, I can show you guys. You guys can give us a call, and I can show you that as well. All right? Okay, guys. So, again, the edit tool, that is what's going to help you guys edit your different designs. So, let's just say we have, let's go ahead and create a box here, and we want to change. Actually, you know what? Let's get a little more complex in a box. Let's go ahead and bring this image in here. So, what I have here is a baseball diamond. So, let me go ahead and expand this, and I'm going to go ahead and trace it. So, if I go to my tracing feature here, and I go ahead and do select area. So, and I'll show you guys this section um, a little later on in the webinar, but I just want to show you guys how we can do the editing. So let's just say we don't, let's go ahead and leave it a little bit rough so that way we can do some editing. All right, I'm just gonna select trace, and there it is. So what I can do with the editing tool is, let me go ahead and zoom in up here because that, that actually came out perfect. So you guys see right up here, so right up here, notice how that's not a smooth line right there. So we want to make sure we smooth that out a little bit. So what I can do is I can go here, and I can double-click it, or I can select my design. I can hit my edit points here, and then what I can do is start deleting my points, which is going to start cleaning up this design for me. And you see that? It makes start making it more smooth, just how I want it to look. See that? So now when I add my stones, I won't have an odd shape at the top there and then look the designs gonna look a lot nicer all right so that's what the edit um edit point tool is going to do for you right there and you'll see once you start learning and getting used to the edit point tool um it's going to you're going to see the designs come out a lot nicer so again for either even if you're only if even if you're working with rhinestone designs you'll see where this comes um handy where you'll be able to edit the vector image and then work with uh, the rhinestones to make the design look a lot neater and not a lot cleaner uh, now, the edit point tool, you can only work with if you're using a vector image. So that's why when I brought in that image of the baseball diamond, I had to convert it into a vector design, which is why I use my trace feature up here. And, okay, and again, I will show you guys that um, later on in the webinar. And also here on the right-hand side, you see where selected point. You can also change it down here. You could actually um, use different settings here so you can break the path apart. So if you want to just break this in half, break this, these two lines here, you can do break apart, and then you can start working individually with these two different sections here. You see that? So that broke it apart. Now this is no longer a solid object. All right. Um, Tracy, Tracy's question was, can you use your own drawings? Tracy, yeah, you can bring your own drawings in here and trace it. Now, it all depends on the tracing, how good or bad it's going to turn out. Um, sometimes with the cameo, the tracing can be great, and sometimes it doesn't recognize the lines if it's not too solid. It won't recognize it as well, and the tracing won't be as good. So, um, but I mean, once you get used to the tracing tool with the with the thresholds and the um, right here, the the high pass filter right here, and the low pass filter, then you're gonna understand the software and the and the tracing tool a little better, and you'll see where the tracing design and when you're tracing them, they're gonna come out a lot nicer. Um, but it all depends on the original image. If it's a good quality image when you first bring it in, it's gonna come out all right. If not, it might not come out as the way you want it to look. All right. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. All right, so the other tools you'll see here are your um, just basic shape tools. So you have your two-line tool here. Just creates a two lines, and then if you can, if you don't double-click, you can keep it going. Uh, below that, we got our rectangle tool. 
So here we got our rectangle. We have our smooth corner rectangle here. So it kind of creates a more of an oval, um, excuse me, a smooth corner. And then if you edit points here, you can actually create it into a rectangle if you like as well. Um, then we have our circle tool, which this creates oval. Um, uh, Diane, I'll show you, Diane. We'll see what we can do as far as a basic shape. All right. The look, Diane, actually, Diane's question was, make a heart. I tried in silhouette and had no luck. There was none, no one in basic shape. Uh, the great thing, Diane, is the, the heart will normally trace out really well in silhouette. Um, I know you say you use Corel, Diane, so what you can do is you can actually create the, the heart using the basic tools in Corel, create a vector image out of it, and then just save the SVG file and bring it into your silhouette designer editions, and that way you have a heart ready to go. And actually, let me see something. You might actually, if I go to library, let me see something here. Uh, maybe Matt doesn't have, uh, okay, maybe he doesn't have anything in his library. Thought he had some designs in here, but I guess not. But uh, usually in the library, you'll see some designs. It, the, the design edition comes with them. And I'm not sure if it actually comes with a heart or not. You might, might be able to find one of the basic shapes in there. There was not? Okay, gotcha. Okay, yeah, I mean, like I said, in that case, you can you can create it in Corel Draw, or you can find a basic heart. Not that I'm saying you guys should do this, but you guys can maybe find a basic heart shape on on uh, Google, and uh, just trace it in here. But again, we don't recommend doing that. So, but it's something like I said because the it's a basic shape, the design edition will most likely trace it pretty good. All right, all right. So the next tool is we got our polygon tool here. Again, this is going to create some cool looking effects, straight line. Designs very similar to our two-point line up here. Um, we also have our smooth polygon shape. So this is actually going to create some curved lines for you. So again, these are just your tracing tools. So if you guys want to trace a particular design without using your trace window up here, this is how you can trace it. For you guys that work with Corel Draw, this would be similar to using your B-spline tool. All right. Uh, then we have our freehand tools here that are just going to create, you know, your your basic freehands. This one creates a solid line. So it kind of reads what you guys draw on the screen and makes a solid line for you, whereas the freehand just kind of does what you do on the screen, doesn't fix it up for you. Um, some other tools here, but now let's go ahead and get to the good stuff. So those are your basic tools just for, obviously, that you'll see in most software. So even when you guys worked with paint, you guys see those, those particular features there. All right, so what we're really going to work with is more of the um, edit tools here, so our alpha, our text tool, we also have all of our different tools up here, so our rhinestone window, we have our offset feature, we have our modify here, so we're going to be going over that now, which is going to really help you guys when designing your, um, during the designing process, so the first off, let's go ahead and use our text, so our text is very unique, it's going to be, we have on our website a lot of true type fonts as well, that a lot of people don't realize they can use for the designer edition software. So let me show you guys how th those work. So let's go ahead and type out, we can type out cheer. All right, and then what we have here, let's go ahead and highlight my design, and I'm going to go to my font style here. So this is my font preview section here that I can use to search for my fonts. So I'm just going to type in TRW, and let's just do baseball. That's what we have here. So we have our baseball design here. So it doesn't really correlate because it's a baseball design. I'm using cheer, but that's all right. All right, so what we have here is just going to be, um, it looks like this is our outline, but let's go ahead and change the color so you guys can see a little bit better. So let's go ahead and make it blue. So this is actually the fill of this particular font. Now, this font is something we have already created, all right? So this is a two-color design, and I know this because on the website, when you first see the font on the mock-up, it's going to show you that it's a two-color design. So to create the second color, what I need to do is, first off, I'm going to duplicate this particular font, or excuse me, this word. So I'm going to go back to my, I can do a control V or excuse me, control C, control V, which is going to duplicate it. So to see that, it just duplicated for me. So do you guys need to see that again? All I did was hold control down, I hit C to copy, and then V as in Victor to paste. You see that? So now those two are uh, same exact size, so I just copied that one. I'm going to go ahead and make that red. So now what I have here is my two templates, okay? Uh, Tina, yes, Tina's question was, does this software use your own true type fonts you already have on your computer? It does, yes. Um, it's similar to any other software. Once you install it, it'll be installed right into your li uh, font library. All right, so that's where you can find that, those particular fonts. All right, so now 
what I need to do is get these set one on top of each other, and I need to do, do that perfectly. So they're, they need to be perfectly one on top of the other, so I can go ahead and add the second color in there. So that second color is going to be the outline and also the fill for the players inside of my word here. Okay? So to do that, I'm going to highlight both of my words, and then I'm going to go up here to where I have my duplicate. Oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry, align feature here. So I'm going to go to align. And then up here in align, you see where it says center, okay? If I hit center, it's going to bring that together. So now you see that? Now one's on top of the other. Now all I have to do is double-click on the top layer and then just re-highlight it. And then I'm going to hold shift now. While holding shift, I'm going to retype my words. So I'm just going to type cheer, cheer again. And there it is. So now we have our two-color design. Oh, let me go ahead. It looks like I actually did the original one in caps. So let's go ahead and do cheer. See that? So now we have our second color. And that's it. We're ready to go. So this design, this word, so this could be, uh, you can either put baseball mom, you know, you can do different things with this particular uh, font here. But that's how you create a two, that two-color font uh, using the Rhinestone World True Type fonts that we offer on the website. All right? Uh, Maria, let me show you again. Perfect. Okay. And I figured you guys had to do that, all right? All right. So let's go ahead and reach, redo that all, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and delete this section and start off where we started. All right, so first thing we got to do with this is what? You guys remember? Okay, yes, perfect, exactly. So we first need to copy, duplicate, exactly. So to duplicate it, we're going to do copy, we're going to do control C, control V, all right? So now we have two of the same exact words, same fills, but what we need to do, to make it easier, I like to go ahead and change the color. So if I go up here to my fill color window, I can go ahead and change the color. So let's just go ahead and change it to red. So now what we have here is two of the same words, and they look exactly the same, right? So now we need to do one thing, and that's put one on top of the other and have them centered perfectly, all right? So to do that, where are we going to go? Align, exactly, Tracy. Tracy is on top of things here. So we're going to go to align, and then we're going to just hit center, all right? So there it is, center. So now that we got that there, now we're going to double-click on my design again, which if I double-click, now notice what happens here. So... If I click once, it highlights it, but it doesn't allow me to change it. All right, so if I try to type over it, it's not going to allow me to. What I need to do is double click, and now look what happens. So the screen box around here lets me know that I am in the edit text feature. So now what I need to do is just highlight my design. So all I did is left click and hold down left click, and I just highlighted over my word. So that gives me the ability to now type it out again. So I'm going to go cheer. So C-H-E-E-R, and there it is. So there's your second color. And that design is ready to go. So, of course, from here, you can take it to your cut settings. And now I have my advanced features here. So if I want to cut the blue first, cut out, go ahead and cut out the blue. And also, if you want to cut out the red, you can go ahead and select the red and cut out the red. So that's how quick and easy you guys can utilize these fonts, all right? And you can do the same thing when working with uh, rhinestone true type fonts. And now, guys, I don't know if you guys can hear in the background, but we have a lot of uh, noise going on that we still do. Um, and we have a lot, we have a lot of noise because we're getting we're still getting our built out here in the in the warehouse. So if you guys hear all the, yeah, I'm trying to Diana. That's one thing I was looking to do here while I was going on there. I was trying to cut out the background music. Let me um let me see if I can get the guys to cut that background music because it's quite uh it's not very fun right now. All right, so give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry about that. I appreciate you guys' patience. I, uh, I don't think the workers are going to like me too much, but you know what? It's, you guys are way more important right now, so we need to get, we got to make sure you guys are able to hear everything I'm saying. Um, all right, so I do have some questions in, coming in. Diane says in this. Uh, Diane, yes. Uh, okay, Diane, Diane, is on, Diane is on top of things here. All right, so what I have here is notice how it's cut out, right? So what we have done is, now, are you guys working with Glitter Vinyl at the moment? 
Yes, okay, perfect. Now, as many of you guys know, with the glitter vinyl, we can't layer the material, or it's not recommended to layer. The reason for that is because the texture of it is very rough, and if you feel it, the actual finished product, it almost feels like sandpaper. So what happens is when you wash it, you get some of that water from, you know, you get the water that gets sneaks into those little, uh, into those rough edges, and it gets underneath the, the second layer, and eventually over time it's going to start peeling off, all right? So with the trapping method, it allows you to put that second layer directly onto your garment. And the way we do that is by creating a simplify method here. So it simplifies it so the you can see the blue is going to go directly onto the garment. And also, you can see where we well, won't be able to see it in here to say, but if you are working in a software where um, you'll see be able to do a wireframe, and then you can see that we did an overlap as well. So it's not just a simplify where it just, where it just it cuts out the back. It actually It's actually doing an overlap as well. So you get a little bit more room for error, so you don't have to eyeball it as much. And it just makes it easier on your eyes when pressing that second layer on there. But when you see the finished result, the, out, the, the extra overlap, it's so minimal that you won't even be able to tell on the finished product. Uh, Roberto, Studio Designer works with rolling cutters. It does not. The Studio Designer is only works with the Cameo, Roberto. All right. Uh, Misty, I, I, I saw your question already, and I was already going to do that for you. All right. So let's go ahead and go back here. So now that we have our design, and let's just say we don't, we still want to do something else. Let's just say the customer calls in, and she wants to just add a little bit more flair to this design. So what can we do to it? You know what? Hey, I know what we can do. We can add some rhinestones to it. Okay, perfect. So what we can do is, I'm going to highlight the outside layer. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. So we can, actually, you know what, even, be, even we don't even have to do that. We can just click on the red player inside here. So now I'm selecting just the red, so just the outline, all right? So what I want to do now is I'm going to go to my, I'm going to go to my offset feature that I have over here. So I'm going to go offset, all right? So now with my offset, it's going to make it very easy to create a boundary and then also be able to add the stones to that boundary, all right? So I'm going to go offset, and now look at that. So it creates an offset for me, and now what I can do is I can either increase the size or decrease the size. You see that? And when I actually do this, it's actually it's actually going to delete. It's actually going to weld it together as well. So if I hit apply, notice how everything goes away, and I can actually add my stones to this particular path now, all right? So I can go here to my rhinestones feature and add my stones and then of course you can bring it closer together make it look a little bit nicer as you see that you can actually bring it closer bring it apart um, I would just not do the offset as far that's the only thing I did that doesn't make it look as good it's just because the offset is a little bit off the actual word but with the offset feature you'll be able to actually place those stones in there and the great thing is if I do if I actually simplify it like this see how I moved it inside I got was actually, I actually I was actually able to move the stones now if I release my stones I go right click, make compound path, and then right click, right click again and release it. What that allows me to do is select each individual stone. And notice, even though I brought the design in, notice if I click on each individual stone, it still gives me that 0 .130. So that tells me it's exactly where I need it to be. So even though I changed the size, actually brought the stones in closer to the design, it didn't actually change the overall um, dimensions of the stones, all right? So that's one great feature that the Sil Silhouette Design Edition Studio has is that you're able to do that with the stones so that way you can make it fit the design a lot better. So now you, what you have here is your rhinestones on the outside and you have your cheer on the inside and now that has that extra flair, that extra bling that your customer was looking for, all right? Uh, Diane, uh, okay, if they were SS10 stones and you wanted to change to say SS6, can you do that? Yes, absolutely. Let's go ahead and go back. Let's go ahead and go back to that section where we were at before. So what I before you release the stones, so right here in this at this point, I can go here to sixes, I can go to sixteens, I can go to twenties, I can change whatever I need to change based on my rhinestone size here. All right. So that's how you can do that. And then you can also change the spacing down here as well. So you can change the spacing according to you know what you want the spacing to be in between each stone. All right. Um, uh, do you have? Do you not have to release path on stones? Yes, you do. And I released the path earlier, but because I wanted because I wanted to change the stone size, I went all the way back to the original where I did before I released the stones, and that allowed me to change the stone size. All right. So that will, right there will allow me to change the stone size 
uh, but it still has to be in the path for me to be able to change it. Otherwise, you would change it one by one. All right. Perfect. Does anybody have any questions how we did that, uh, the outline there with the rhinestones? Uh, Michael, can you offset the inside as well or only the outside? Perfect question. Let me show you that real quick here, Mike. So we also have, let me go ahead and bring this image in here so that way we can show you. Um, let's go ahead and show you the tracing features here. So let's go back to trace, all right? So let me go ahead and select trace area. So this is what's going to allow me to select my area where we want to trace. So go ahead and select that area. Now notice how I have these yellow lines out here. So that's going to tell me when I trace it, it's going to have two rows of lines, all right? But I don't want that. What I want is I want this to be one solid and then the inside right here. So this would be um, the, the, the grass area right here with your mound and everything. And then you have the dirt on the outside. So this would be a two-color design. Right now, looks what I, look if I did that, it's going to look like this, which is when I place my stones, it's just not going to come out the way I want it to look. All right, so if I go back, let's go ahead and go back here. And now if I play around with my high pass filter, look what happens. If I fill it all in, so let's go ahead and fill it all yellow. So perfect. Now look what happens when I hit my trace tool. See that? Now it's one solid shape there, and they, the inside is also going to be uh, its second color. So let's go ahead and make this. Let's go ahead and change this to red. All right, and now this I can go ahead and ungroup. So once I ungroup, oh, excuse me, release compound. I can go ahead and take off the middle, or let's go ahead and go back one. All right, from here, what we can do is let me go ahead and show Mike the offset to the inside, all right? So I can go back to my offset window here, and I can do internal offset, all right? And that's going to create, oh, what do we have here? And see that? That's going to create my offset for me. So it's created in the inside. You see that? So rather than the outside before, let's go ahead and go back. So outside goes on the outside of the lines. And then internal goes right here in the inside. You see that? So that is how you do the internal. All right? No problem at all, Mike. No problem at all. All right. So let me show you cool another cool little thing you guys can do with a silhouette cameo. Now, have you guys ever seen, you know, let's go ahead and bring in a, I actually asked Sergio if he can use his image earlier, and he said yes. So he's a great sport. Uh, Sergio is actually, a, he's our graphic designer. He's a very talented man, but. We're going to be utilizing his image today just to show you another cool thing we can do with a trace feature. So let's go ahead and shrink this down some, make it a little bit easier to work with. All right. So what I can do with this image with my tracing feature, have you guys ever seen how I'm a huge uh, Chivon fan, KCCO, but uh, they had the Bill Murray image where it's kind of distorted a little bit, but it looks really cool. Well, the silhouette came actually allows you to do that with using the trace tool. So if I can go to trace, let's go and select my tracing area here. All right, so now what I can do is with changing my high pass filter here or changing my threshold, I can change the image ups to make it look really cool. But you'll see when I actually press my uh, trace feature and pull it away, see how it still kind of looks like them? Has that real cool effect. Now, if you go in there and clean it up a little bit, you'll see if you clean up these areas down here, you can actually get in there and cut this out with your vinyl cutter. It makes a really cool looking design. And that's actually we've done that here with, uh, with a lot of the guys' faces or in the, the gals' faces that work here. Then we actually, uh, what we're creating is basically um, uh, just a photo frame with everybody's face on it uh, with this look. And it comes out really, really cool. So I just wanted to show you guys look, another cool thing that you can do with that trace feature. It might not be something that helps you guys out, but it's something cool that, you know, in the future, if you want to create something like this for um, special someone or, you know, make it a customer, you have that ability now. All right. So just another cool thing there with the tracing tool. All right. So now, another cool thing about my edit tab here. So now, if you guys uh, have you guys been able to have you guys have worked with uh, the texting and being able to arch a particular word or particular saying before? Okay, looks like some of you guys have and some of you have not. Okay, cool. So let me show you something right here. So let's just say we have. Let's go ahead and we say we have this design here, and we want to actually. Let me go ahead and choose something different. Let me go ahead and choose. I think I have some files here that I can bring in. Okay, there we go. So let's just say we have this basketball here, and our customer calls in, and they really want to add a text to the top here. All right, so they just want to add, let's just say, Mustangs to the top here. All right, so, yeah, you can go here, and you can type out Mustangs and place it right on top, and it's going to look all right. But maybe they want a little bit fancier, something a little bit more fancy. 
where they can actually make it makes the design look nicer. Right? So what I can do is I can grab this. Notice what I did here. I grabbed this area. So let me zoom out real quick here for you guys. So in my text edit feature, so again, if I click it once, I'm not in my edit, te edit text. All right. If I double click and highlight, then I'm in my edit text. All right. So double click, edit text, and then it gives me this little arrow key here on the bottom left corner that allows me to drag my word. And if I find a text or excuse me, a path, then I can add it to that path. So you see that? So I go right here, add it, bam. And then I can move it up and down if I like. So go ahead and double click here. And I can go ahead and move it. Oh. Can I get that little uh okay. Well it's not it's not letting me grab that little uh text tool I need to work with. So this one right. Let's go ahead and zoom in. So I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in here so that way it makes it a little bit easier for me to be able to grab that uh All right, let me see here. All right. So let's go here. And then the one thing you guys got to remember to do is you got to have to make a compound again, all right? So that's the biggest thing you guys have to do when you guys are working with this feature right here, all right? So once you do that, then you can actually expand the size out. You can move it around. You see that now I can move it around the screen and move it around the ball if you like. So you can add attach that text to that path right there. All right. Um, Bethany, can you put the word on any path in the image or just the outside path? You can, and you saw where I got it. The reason that this image became a little bit tougher, it was because it tried to get, see how it tried to get, it almost read each individual object inside the ball as a path. So that's what made it a little bit more difficult with this particular design there. So it almost read like the inside right here as a path. So that's why I put it almost put it in here rather than on the outside. Did you see that, Bethany? But yes, you can put it anywhere on the design. It doesn't just have to be on the outside. As long as it reads a path, it will be able to put it on that path. All right. Um, Diane, how can you move the letters closer together like the wizard? So if I wanted to do a cutout image. All right, let me see if I can understand what you're saying here, Diane. Let's get rid of this. So you're saying just move it closer together like this and further apart. So all I did is under the text spacing. Okay, perfect. Yeah. Under your text tool right here, Diane, you have your te character spacing, which allows you to move these in and, and out. You see that? So those help you move in and out. And also you can, if you have a double line, you're also able to change the line spacing as well. And you can also switch it to vertical here. You can do the different things here with uh, alignment as well. Um, so, yeah, again, the texting tool in the Silhouette Designer Edition is going to be very helpful for you guys. I think you guys are going to really utilize that a lot, especially when working with the different fonts. All right. So now let me show you guys how to create a two-color rhinestone design here. So I know we always get questions on how, you know, how to create rhinestone designs in the Designer Edition software. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that don't even realize that Designer Edition software has the ability to create rhinestone designs. All right. So let's go ahead and let's see what we have here to bring in. Uh, Tracy, will we ever have a Mac version? Actually, the Designer Edition software is compatible with Mac. So it already is compatible with the, uh, now as far as the TRW Stone Wizard, yes, exactly, yes, the Designer Edition is. As far as the TRW Stone Wizard, Tracy, that on the other hand, at the moment, it's not in the plans um, because Corel Draw is not compatible with Macs. All right? Perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see what we can do. Let's go ahead and try out this. Uh, let's go ahead and bring in this diamond again and see what we can do with it. All right, so let's go ahead and make this a little bit bigger here. All right, and then let's go ahead and trace it again. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and trace this, this design out right here. And let's just do uh, yellow. Trace. Take this away. All right, so to do a two-color now, I still want to do... I want to go ahead and do an offset fill here. So I'm going to do an offset to the outside. Let's just go ahead and make it a little bit bigger. So let's just go ahead and widen that offset out a little bit. Actually, now let's just go back to how it was. And then let's see what we can do here. All right, that should be perfect. All right, so what I want to do is make this line right here. Let's go ahead and make that line blue. And then we'll keep that one on the outside a different color. So now, back to my rhinestone feature, my rhinestone window here. What we have here that we haven't covered yet is the different fills here. All right. So what we have is a linear fill and we have a radio fill, okay? 
Now, with the radio fill, let me show you what we can do with the radio fill. So the radio fill is going to create us uh, more of a design where the where the paths are created based on the original design. So rather than doing horizontal lines or a specific line uh, pattern, it actually creates the original design pattern over and over again until it reaches the center. Okay, so from there I can change my spacing, clean it up a little bit so I can clean up the inside of my design. So I can clean it up some. I can, of course, I can go in there and fix some of the stones by editing the, the switching, moving them around, the rhinestones. Um, but if I did a linear fill, see how much it almost doesn't look natural. It almost looks a little bit distorted at the top. It doesn't look as clean like we want it to look. Uh, the stones aren't really flowing as nicely. It does look like it's more filled. But if you actually look at the outside here, there's a lot of editing to be done. Almost more editing on this one than there would. And notice here. It's not e even to this side, so a lot wrong when you do the radio, f the linear fill when you're working with uh, with uh, more of a rounded design. The linear fill is going to be work best when you're working with a design where you're working with a more of a uh, block font like a college black or a, um, or you can also do the Arial black. All those fonts that are more bold and more block, then those were that's where you want to use linear fill. In this case, we want to use a radio fill. It just makes the design look a lot cleaner, but of course you're gonna have to do some editing in here as well. But look at the outside, much cleaner. These are both even. So with minimal work here, you'll, this design will look good. Now we're ready to add the second color here. All right. So now I can go here and I can do my edge fill to create the second color, and there it is. So now I have an awesome looking two color design ready to go. Of course, with a minor editing in the middle here, this design is gonna look great, and then you can send it to your cutter ready to cut. All right. Um, Roberto, this software comes with Silhouette Cutter. It does. Now, the Designer Edition, to be able to bring in different designs, now this, um, that's called the Silhouette Studio. That's the one that comes with the cutter. But as far as the Designer Edition software, the Designer Edition software only comes um, as, as an upgrade. So you actually have to purchase the upgrade. And we it's on the website now for $44. So it's not a massive upgrade. It's Again, it's just going to be the basic tools as far as being able to bring in your the different file types, um, like SVG file types, from because what happens is when you purchase the Silhouette Cameo, the studio, the Silhouette Studio that it comes with, only allows you to work with designs that are made in, by Silhouette America. All right. So the Designer Edition was created to be able to work with uh, outside designs. It also gives you the feature here for rhinestones. Um, so different features in there to work with outside designs. It also allows you to work with the different true type fonts as well. Um, so for what we're doing, you're going to want to upgrade to the uh, Designer Edition software, but again, that's only a $44 upgrade, all right? Tracy, can you use two fills? Uh, you can like we did there. You would have to create multiple um, outlines when you're working with the rhinestone designs, all right? How close should spacing be for stones? Diane, because we're working with the designer, or excuse me, with the silhouette cutter, um, you want to have a little bit more space in between each stone. It's not as strong of a cutter to be able to cut this, uh, the circles as close together. So you definitely want to give them a little bit more space in between. But usually when uh, the default settings for that silhouette gives you are usually pretty good. You can see there's a lot of spacing in between these. So you shouldn't have to worry too much about changing the spacing in between. All right. Um, can we use the TRW software with Studio but without Corel? Uh, Bethany, unfortunately you cannot. Um, the TRW software is specific plugin for Corel Draw, so you cannot use it with an outside software. Um, so what it is is CorelDRAW is obviously your main, ba your main base software where you're going to be able to do your vectorizing, you're going to bring your designs, bitmap it, vectorize it, do whatever you need to do with it in there. And then the TRW Stone Wizard, which is a plugin, is going to be able to utilize the features in CorelDRAW to um, make the different tools and features much easier to work with. And it's also going to allow you to be able to place the stones, do the magic trap, templates, mockups, all those different things that you can do with the software. Uh, Maria, yes, I can definitely do that. Yeah, unfortunately, Bethany, again, because the the design edition software doesn't have the ability and tools that CorelDRAW has to be able to create a strong uh, rhinestone software such as the TRW Stone Wizard. All right, uh, Maria, Maria's question was, uh, can you show us how to turn regular text into a rhinestone text? And I certainly can. So let's go ahead and show you guys. And if you guys have any suggestions at all, let me know. I usually take the last 10 minutes of the webinar to take questions in. If you guys want to see anything else and me do anything over again, all right? So let's go ahead and show you guys how to create a regular text into a rhinestone text. 
All right. So let's type out. Uh, let's go ahead and type out baseball. So let's just say we have baseball typed out, and let's go ahead and choose a nice font that's going to be um, nice and bold for us. So I can choose this one here, and let's go ahead and just make it a little bit bigger. All right. So two things we can do here is if you want to go ahead and do just the outline. So if you want to just do the outline of this particular design. Actually, let's go ahead and make it a little bit smaller. So if I just want to do the outline, I can go up here to my rhinestone window, and I can simply hit my edge, and that's going to create it for me. You see that? And then I can expand it a little bit to make it look a lot nicer, see how the stones start filling in. So that might not be a font you want to use because look how big it looks, turns out. All right, so that might not be the font that you want to use for this particular word. So you might want to use something a little bit smaller, maybe just a normal impact would probably be works, work best for this for words such as baseball, football, volleyball. Um, another thing you can do with it, you can also do a radio fill. So see the radio fill is a little bit messy. Now watch what happens if I do a linear fill. See that? Much cleaner. looks a lot nicer. But again, because this font is um, pretty bold, baseball might not be the right word for it. So let's go ahead and see what we can do with something else. So let's see. And notice even if because I already have it stoned out, I can go through my fonts here. And it will still change the font for me, but it's going to change it to um, rhinestones already. You see that? So that's a pretty cool uh, feature there that the Stone Wizard, or excuse me, the Designer Edition software has. So I can go scroll through my fonts here, and it's going to change it for me. You see that? So you can actually see what they're all going to look like. All right. Um, did that make sense, Maria? Is that what you wanted to see? Now, as far as creating into a true type font, that's a whole different ball game. Um, that the Designer Edition software won't allow you to do. That's even as Corel Draw, you still need an outside source to do it. Uh, two color, yes, I can actually. Let's go ahead and try that. So let's go ahead and use Cheer this time, just because I knew I saw that baseball was going to be too big of a word for that particular font, but I still want to work with that font. So let's go ahead and grab Cheer. Let's go ahead and just change the size here. All right. So again, I'm gonna I'm gonna help you guys help me out with this one. First thing we need to do now is what. Okay, perfect. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Uh, no, Maria, actually, we don't have to trace this one. Diane, highlight? Well, it's already highlighted. What we need to do is I think somebody up there said it. Yep, exactly. We have to create an offset. So let's go ahead and go offset, and I'm just going to do offset to the outside. All right? So that's it. But now notice what happens here. Again, when I hit my, ma my uh, magnifying glass here to zoom in, see how I have a lot of little areas right here? But this is it's going to try to stone those areas out. So let's go ahead and get rid of that outline and redo the outline where we don't have those areas. So I'm going to do offset, and this time I'm just going to change the distance just a tad bit. So now look at how they're all welded, or excuse me, they're all overlapping here. Don't worry about that because when I hit apply, it's all going to weld together and just going to give me a nice outline. All right? So now what I'll have to do is just delete minor um, stones here. That It's going to place a couple stones here and here, but that's going to be an easy fix. All right? So now we have a two-color design. All right? So what we need to do is first we're going to add our first color of stones to the outside. So for that one, I want to do a edge fill. Okay, so there it is. There's my edge fill. There's my first color stones. Let's go up here. And actually, let's go ahead and make a fill color so that way you guys can see it better. Okay, so there's our stones. Now, if I want to go ahead and get them a little bit closer together to the design, I can do that as well. We can do bring it in some. There it is. Now I can go ahead and add my second uh, color of stones. All right. And to do that, we're going to go back to my rhinestone window. I'm going to select the cheer in the inside here. And I'm just going to do, again, my linear fill. There it is. So now I have my two-color design. You can go in there and do some fixing up. But that would be how you, you know, the basics of how you create that two-color design. Again, if you want to go ahead and bring in some of the stones a little bit closer, you can do so. There you go. And make that design look a lot cleaner. Now what we can do is go here and go back to right-click, hit. Release compound path, and now it looks like we got a couple things in there. But of course, you can go in there and fix those uh, touching stones that are in there. But again, that's uh, that would be the basics of creating that two-color design. And again, it doesn't take too much time out of your time out of your day to create a cool-looking design in a designer edition software. So again, it's not the most complex software, but it's going to do a lot for you, especially when you're first starting out. It keeps it simple enough for that learning process to be not as overwhelming as it would be for a uh, software such as CorelDRAW. Uh, which is a more, way more complex software, okay? Oh, okay, perfect. Great question, Maria. So Maria's question was, how do we cut this by color, okay? Again, all I need to do is highlight my design. Because I have two colors here, so I have my red 
and my blue. And this is why we create the design with two colors like this. Is now I can go to my cut settings here. And under my cut settings, again, when you first open cut settings, you might have you might only see this area right here. Okay, right now, if I have this open like this, it's gonna cut everything you see on the screen. Everything that's highlighted in red. So you see a little red um kind of a it's almost like glowing. Uh that right there is gonna tell you that's gonna be cutting. Alright, so what I want to do is just cut this by layers. And the way to do that, I'm gonna go to my advanced settings here, and now I have my layers here that I can select. So if I want to just select uh, my blue. I can go ahead here, and of course, before we would do all this, we would have to create a box. All right, so we would create two boxes, which would work as our weed box. All right, so let me let me, show, let me go ahead and show you how to do that. So what we can do is go back to here, and what I would just do from here is just create two boxes. So I can create one here, and this one will make, and you see this would be your weed box here. So now what I can do is this could be my red box, so that I know is going to cut with the red now. Okay, and then I can do the same thing. So I can do Control V, and then if I select these two together, and I hit my Align now, and I hit Center, see how it centers centers it together. But now let's go ahead and select these, and I'll make this one blue. All right. So now my top one's gonna be blue. Oh, that doesn't look like blue. It's gonna do blue. All right. Well, I can't find the same blue I used earlier. Cause I used a fill here, but that's how you can do. Go ahead and now I can go to my cut settings here, and now I'm gonna have my second layer. So if I select my red, what it selects is this, and it's also gonna select the box underneath. So now I know that that's gonna cut out with the red, the red stones there. All right. So that's how you can create your weed box and cut it all out um, to two different layers with the red stones and the blue stones. All right. Does that make sense, Maria? And again, the box, we created the box there as the, the weed box, which acted as our, again, our registration mark. Okay? Awesome. Glad, okay, cool. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right, guys. So, looks like we are all out of time today. Now, I do want to answer, like I said, I do want to answer as many questions as I can. Um, you can probably stay a couple minutes afterwards. So, if you guys do have any questions at all, let me know. Is there any way to do mock-ups in DE? Um, Mike, uh, the one way you can do it is you can, again, you can have, uh, if you have, uh, Let's just say if you have the shirt mock-up that we offer at the TRW Stone Wizard. I could technically, I can grab that image or that vector file of the shirt. I can save it as an SVG file and I can bring it into my Designer Edition software. And from there, I can go ahead and, you know, I can do my mock-up from there. I can create a nice border around it and then add my design to it. Um, but other than that, I mean, that would be the best way to do it is if you bring an outside image in of a shirt or, you know, a cup or a hat or whatever you're trying to do the mock-up in and then basically create your own mock-up they don't it doesn't have a feature to create it for you but I mean you can it does have the features for you to be able to create your own all right awesome yeah so again if you guys anybody, let me know if anybody has any questions I'll be more than happy okay Maria how do you make a vector uh, okay great question Maria actually for the vector let me go ahead and show you again so let's go ahead and bring our image in here so we have our diamond I know you guys are probably getting sick of seeing this diamond by now but right now this is a PNG file okay Maria so this is a PNG file what I have to do is convert it into a vector image which is going to allow me to um, use my po edit points here or it's going to also allow me to add my stones to this particular design alright um, a vector files basically they also give you uh, cut lines so right now if I went to if I wanted to send this to my cutter if I go here to my cut settings Notice what happens is the only thing it's highlighted here is the outside box. So if I try to cut this, if I wanted to cut this particular design out, all that would cut out is this outside box here, okay? That's the only thing that would cut out right now. There's no vector of the diamond yet. So what I need to do to create the vector file is, I mean, I'm going to go to my tracing tool. So the tracing tool is what's going to convert this into a vector file, okay? So what I need to do now is I'm going to go select trace area here. So you guys already seen this happen before. So I'm just going to trace my area. Okay. And then I'm going to go here to my high pass filter. And again, this, the knowledge of how to use the high pass filter, low pass filter, threshold and scale, that's all going to come with the repetition and, um, you know, just being using the software more and more. All right. So I do a high pass filter here. I change it. Let's go ahead and increase it a little bit more so everything is yellow in there. And now I can do trace. So I'm going to hit trace. Let's take away the original image. This is the leftover image. Is my vector file. 
I have my PNG file here. I can delete that. I can go back up here, change the color. So let's make that red. Now watch what happens. So I'm going to highlight my design. I'm going to go to my cut settings here. And now watch this. Now the diamond is highlighted. So now I know I can cut this diamond out. So that is a cut. That's a vector file. Here are my cut lines. Now this design is ready to go. Okay. Does that make sense? No. <laughs> okay, cool, Maria. No problem at all. Uh, Michael, can you mainly freehand trace images or is the only way? Uh, no, that's a great question, Mike. And that's why I showed earlier. Let me show you. Let me go ahead and go back here a couple of steps. So in that case, Mike, what we want to do is actually, let's go back a few times here. All right, so let's go ahead and go back, back, back. Okay, right here. So what I can do in that case is I would be able to use my tracing tools right here. So like right here, we have our draw smooth tool. You can use this one. So you can, I mean, you can use all the different free hand tools. You can also use your uh, draw a curve shape. So this one right here is the one I would recommend because it's the one that's going to allow you to trace it. Like I said, this almost works like the B-spline tool in Corel Draw, and then you can move it around and then trace it. See that? But you can actually trace it using that particular tool there. Now, I'm not too familiar working with InDesign Edition. I'm pretty good with the B-spline tool in Corel, so I'm sure I can understand and grab how to do the the smooth tool here. So I, I think within a couple of tries, you can probably get it down packed on how to trace this particular design using those trade tools. All right. Uh, how do I make a sharp corner with that? Uh, that was actually a curved corner there, but if, I, I believe it has a shortcut. So it's not something I've worked, like I said, it's not something I've tried out yet, but I like I know with Corel, if you hold control, it does certain things. So hold Z, it holds, does certain things. Um, I can look at that into you. I can look into that for you, but I know also you have the actual polygon tool here that does that for you. So I can go here, here, and I can create a sharp corner like that. You see that? So the polygon tool does that for you as well. All right. <laughs> so Maria, this so this is good if you have a business logo to stone. Yes, it is. Yes, absolutely. That would be perfect for that. <laughs> no problem, Mike. I understand. It's about that time to get some more coffee. Absolutely. Uh, Tracy, go to work now. Thank you. <laughs> hey, Tracy. It's when I'm helping you guys out, it's not working. That's 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 what I love doing. I love helping you guys out and showing you guys how to do all these awesome looking things. I mean, honestly, what I do is I'll go on the computer maybe an hour out of the week and I just research how to do different things with the different programs. And that's really how I learned how to do most of this. Obviously, Matt has helped me tremendously with the learning process with all the videos. But honestly, I never went to school to be a graphic designer. I never went to school to do any of this, to be a rhinestone or absolutely not. Um, I went to school to be a physical therapist, to tell you the truth, funny enough, but um, somehow I ended up here. Matt, Matt was my baseball coach, helped me out, started doing this, and seems, I mean, I really enjoy helping you guys out and doing what I do now, so again, this is all to help you guys, and it, we do this for all, all this is for you guys, and you guys helped, uh, you guys definitely helped TRW grow and to where, put it where it is now, so I do appreciate all you guys' time and effort and everything you guys are doing for us, and um, all the time you guys take out of your day to be able to join us for our videos and these webinars and everything we do to put out there for all the education for you guys. All right. Um, I do see some other questions coming in. Um, now, Maria, the only thing with this one, how would you import this into TRW? You actually cannot. This For this particular design, anything that gets created in the designer edition, you cannot export out. All right. Um, Bethany, how can I put a name in the outfield of your diamond? Oh, Bethany, great question. All right, so before we go, one last thing before we go for Bethany. I know I did this one at the last webinar we did for the Designer Edition software. So let's go ahead and do that for Bethany real quick here. So what are we doing here? All right, so let me go back here. X out of that. And let's go ahead and create a new tracing space here. All right, so go ahead and trace this down. So now what we want to do is we're going to create the, we're going to vectorize this again. So we still have to vectorize it. Let's go ahead and change the color here. Let's go ahead and make it red. All right. And now let's just go ahead and type out what name do you, would you like to see on there, Tracy? Or excuse me, uh, Bethany. Okay. No preference? Okay, perfect. Let's just go ahead. Uh, let's, do, uh, let's do a cool name. Let's go ahead and do Rudy. Why not? All right. So we have Rudy here. Let's go ahead and change the color. So let's go ahead and make this blue. All right. So now all I want to do is let's just say we want to do, if you want to just, now we're talking about do you want to make it show through 
or do you want to do where you can do like a um, where you want to see the the Rudy kind of show through the shirt? So we're gonna have a one color vinyl design, all right? So to do that, I'm gonna highlight the Rudy. I'm gonna highlight my background here. So notice if I have I have Rudy highlighted, if I hold Shift and select my diamond, it's gonna select both of those, okay? So now if I go to my modify tool up here, so modifies where you're gonna find all the goodies here. So here's where you're gonna find weld, you're gonna find intersect, subtract. So if I hit subtract, look what happens. Now it subtracted that out of there. Let's go ahead and get rid of these. Oh. There it is. So now it subtracted the, the Rudy out of there. And now we have our design ready to go. So I can highlight it here. I would just group this together so the red is grouped with the diamond. And now you have Rudy showing through. All right. <laughs> yeah, Maria, pretty simple to do that, huh? All right. Another thing we can do with it, let's go ahead and go back here. Um, let's see what else we can do. So with the modify, you can also do uh, divide. Now divide, you won't, you'll see it won't do much. You, you can move each individual letters like that. You see that? So you can move it all around. Same thing. But it doesn't delete the, the original R-U-D-Y. Whereas when I did the subtract, it deleted the original R-U-D-Y. You saw that? Stone it. So you want to stone the outside or? What about a longer name like Roberto? Okay, Roberto. I like it. Let's try Roberto. Oh, let's go ahead. Back, back. Okay. Okay, Roberto. We can go ahead here. Let's go ahead and change the size of it. There it is. Now we can go here. Shift, click here, go back to my modify features, hit subtract, and there it is. We're all set there. Yep, no problem at all. And then to stone it out, I can go back to my um, offset feature here, just create an offset again, guys, and then it's going to stone it out for me. All right, so that'll be pretty easy there. <laughs> all right, uh, how do I win the V Day thingy? Tracy, to win the V Day thingy, all you have to do is just go back to our Facebook page. Go ahead and bring that page up here. Facebook page, under the Facebook page, just go um, to our main page here, and then right here, just go ahead and click where it says giveaway, or just simply click, click on the image here, and it's going to show you a registration link right here. So that's how it's, you're going to be able to enter for it. Very easy, very quick to do, um, but again, it's going to give you a great chance to win this awesome, awesome prize. And again, you're going to get a portrait, pretty cool little cutter, nine inches wide. Um, a little bit lesser than quality than the the gra than the silhouette uh, cameo, which is obviously a 12 incher. Uh, so this portrait, I mean, it gets it's gonna get the job done. It's gonna do pretty cool things, especially because it uses the designer edition software as well. So if you already have a cameo and you do win this price, hey, look at that! Now you have two cool uh, cutters there. You can cut use the portrait made for decals and then use your um, silhouette for everything else. So different things you can do with that. Um, obviously, you get all this great stuff with it. So why not sign up? You know. <laughs> All right, so so for a two tone, do we just cut twice? Uh, Bethany, yes, you would cut two different, yep, two different layers exactly. Mm -hmm. All right, all right, guys. So I think we've reached the end of our webinar today. Again, I do appreciate everybody's time. Um, again, oh, one last thing I do want to mention before we go tomorrow, Friday, uh, we are going to be out of the office because we have some, uh, we actually have some electrical work being done, so the power is actually going to be gone. Uh, as you guys could hear in the background earlier, we are still getting some build out done throughout the warehouse. Uh, we just moved into a new warehouse, so a lot of great things going on here, but we're still trying to keep things afloat and make sure that you guys get all your education in. Um, that's why we tr you know, do the webinars, and we try to work with the, wor with the, with the construction workers over there as much as we can to, uh, to be able to accomplish these webinars. Uh, so it's, it's a team effort, and we're getting there. We're getting it done. So. The main goal is hopefully having you guys come into the warehouse and be able to do in-house trainings. Uh, that's the ultimate goal, so that's what we're striving for this year. Of course, if you guys are anywhere in any of the locations around that we're going to be coming to for trade shows, make sure you guys stop by our booth. Um, it's going to be a great time. Again, you guys are going to be in booth trainings, a lot of different classes for the show, so you guys make sure you check those out. Uh, and again, I do appreciate everybody's time today. ATL Bethany, I believe we are going to ATL this year. I'm not too positive I have to check. But I believe we do. Uh, Maria, actually, I do not have a coupon code today. Uh, we did one yesterday. Um, but unfortunately, today we have something else set up, so I cannot do a coupon code. I'm sorry. Um, see you in Columbus. Perfect. Yes, Columbus at the end of the, of the month. Yes, we'll be there. Awesome, Missy. So we'll see you there. 
Uh, Maria, I'm sorry again, um, but I'm sure there will be a lot more coupon codes ahead in the future, so don't worry. Stay tuned. All right. Philadelphia, see you there, Roberto. All right, guys, again, thank you everyone for joining me today. I hope everybody has a great weekend. Uh, we'll see you next week. Check out the Facebook page. We're going to be posting some new webinars as well, so make sure you guys stay tuned for those. Uh, Matt should be back next week, so he'll be conducting a lot of the, uh, some of the webinars as well. We're doing a lot more videos. So, again, guys, stay tuned for a lot more great stuff from the TRW. Again, thank you all for everything you guys do, and I hope you have a great weekend. Have a great day, everybody.